hypergeometric distributions. First, let's test your knowledge. When does one use a Poisson probability distribution? When you are calculating the probability of an inter in an interval of space or time. Ready? Let's test your knowledge again. When does one use a binomial probability distribution? When you are calculating the probability of one of two outcomes, typically success or failure. Let's test your knowledge a third time. What are the conditions for using a binomial probability distribution? The experiment consists of a sequence of n identical trials. Only two outcomes are possible for each trial, success and failure. The probability of a success does not change from trial to trial. The trials are independent. Let's test your knowledge again. What are the conditions for using a Poisson probability distribution? For any two intervals equal in length, the probability of the outcome is the same. The outcomes within the interval are independent. How are the mean and standard deviation for a Poisson probability distribution related? Sigma squared equals mean. Now, let's discuss some new knowledge. When does one use a hypergeometric probability distribution? When there is no replacement. After all, are you really going to put that defective part back in the box? Let's consider a hypergeometric experiment with the following properties. A sample size n is randomly selected without replacement from a population of capital N items. In the population, R items can be classified as successes. N minus R items can be classified as failures. From a typical textbook, this is the formula that you would see. It's confusing, so let's take a step-by-step -step approach in case help is wanted. Calculating the hypergeometric distribution. Step 1, define all variables as follows. Capital N equals the population. Lowercase n equals trials. R equals the number of elements within the entire population that can be defined as success. X equals the successes within the trials. Additional variables, FP is going to be the failure population. So FP is going to equal the population minus the successes contained within the population. The failure sample is going to equal the trials minus the successes within the trials. Now, the formula requires that you calculate the combinations, and it's easiest if you do that now. For example, calculate a success combination as follows, a failure combination as follows, and a population combination as shown. We'll continue this in part two of this video.